Okay, I think we are live now. All right, so hi everyone, happy Wednesday. Welcome to the Mom and Baby Nutrition Support Group. I know we've had a lot of new members recently, so um, I wanted to welcome everybody. My name is Alex Gardner. I am a registered and licensed dietitian, and I specialize in prenatal, postpartum, and infant nutrition. And my goal in life is to help mamas just like yourselves nourish their bodies so that they can feel more energized, feed their baby, and do that without all the anxiety and that overwhelming feeling um, that comes along with it. So tonight, we're going to be talking a little bit about breastfeeding, and that's kind of continuing our theme. And before we get started in tonight's weekly live stream, I did want to mention after this live stream at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're actually going to have our monthly um, breastfeeding what to expect class via zoom so if you would like the zoom link to that message me and let me know it is free to all mamas of this group um, it'll be about an hour long we're gonna dive into a lot of common questions and concerns for breastfeeding moms so even if you have breastfed before it's still a really great class I promise you you'll learn something new I promise um, but tonight, our topic is going to be on foods that we can or can't eat while breastfeeding. And I get this question a lot from moms, like, are there foods I need to avoid? Are there foods that are like super foods that I need to eat with, while breastfeeding? Are there any foods that will increase my supply? So I get that from a lot of moms. So we're going to dive into that tonight. Um, so first, we're going to talk about the foods that moms should avoid or limit while breastfeeding. So first, caffeine. Should we avoid it? Should we limit it? What should we limit it to? These are the questions, okay? So when we're pregnant, it's recommended to limit caffeine to 200 milligrams or less because we metabolize or break down caffeine less efficiently than when we're not pregnant. So that's why it's 200 milligrams or less when we're pregnant. Now, in the postpartum period and before pregnancy, so normal not being pregnant, we metabolize caffeine a lot better than when we're pregnant and we can have a little bit more than that 200 milligrams. So caffeine does pass into the breast milk and this is a problem for preterm and early infants. So if your infant is preterm or if they are younger than three months, we really, they don't really metabolize or break down caffeine like adults. After three months old, they get a lot better at metabolizing it. So we want to be careful because caffeine does pass into the breast milk. So we want to keep caffeine intake below 300 milligrams a day while we're breastfeeding those young infants, okay? So what does 300 milligrams a day even look like? Because I might just give you this number, but if I don't put it into context, then it's not really gonna mean anything. So uh, eight ounces, eight ounces of coffee brewed is about 100 milligrams. Eight ounces is tiny, okay? Especially if you're a coffee drinker. So I usually say uh, a cup, like a cup that we would drink, is about 300 milligrams. So I don't have a, a coffee mug with me. But like a typical American-sized coffee mug that you're going to drink out of in the morning is going to be about 20 ounces, 24 ounces. Um, I think that's the size of a venti at Starbucks. Um, no, it's the size of a girl grande at Starbucks. Um, so that's about 300 milligrams of caffeine. And coffee is what we typically think of when we think of caffeine. But there's other beverages that can have caffeine in them as well. And one of those is tea. Tea doesn't have as much as coffee. And the longer the tea is seeped, like if you make your tea at home and you're seeping it, the longer the tea is seeped, the more of that caffeine will, will seep into the water. So a brewed black tea is going to have eight ounces. And again, it depends on how 
long you brew it, but it's going to have about 50 milligrams of caffeine, so about half of what coffee has. And brewed green tea is going to have about 30 milligrams of caffeine, and that's again about 8 ounces. Um, what about any other drinks? So those are the one, main ones we think of. Energy drinks are a big one. Energy drinks, obviously, the main ingredient that gives you the energy is the caffeine. So we want to stay away from energy drinks while we're breastfeeding. And some sodas actually have caffeine in them as well. Um, and I actually have this really good resource, so I'm going to copy and paste this into the comments. Um, the Center of Science for Public Interest, I believe that's what it is that stands for but they're a very reputable site and this <coughs> excuse me this link that I just posted in the comments is a great kind of um, chart for common beverages so it gives you things from like Starbucks and things that you'll find at the grocery store and it gives you the caffeine content of those um, so those are the big ones dark chocolate also has um, some caffeine in it, but it's usually not enough to matter. I mean, it's usually not. Coffee and tea and energy drinks are your big, your big ones. So stay away from those. Now, what's the good news about that? The good news is I'm not saying don't drink coffee. If it, you have a two-week-old infant and you have gotten a combined 30 minutes of sleep over the past 48 hours, you can drink yourself a cup of coffee, and everything is going to be okay. Um, so what else? What else do we need to limit? So similar to when you're pregnant, we need to watch out for high mercury fish. Fish is a great source of protein, a great source of healthy fats. Um, but we want to limit the fish that has high mercury content, because that passes from the breast milk to the baby. So some good fish options for moms are um, things like salmon, tilapia, cod, catfish, um, things like that. So typically the lower on the food chain the fish is, the lower the mercury content. Shrimp is a good one too. Okay, I also got this question the other week, so I want to make sure that I address it. And I kind of talked a little bit about this in last week's video. But what about cabbage? Some moms have said they've heard that they should avoid cabbage or foods that make them gassy, what we like to call cruciferous vegetables. Things like broccoli, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, kale, things that have a lot of fiber and tend to make you gassy. Um, there isn't really any evidence um, from studies that have been done on cruciferous vegetables that they make your baby gassy. So, I typically caution moms um, if they're thinking about taking these out of their diet because these vegetables are really, really nutritious for you um, and there isn't that much research on limiting them to making your baby less gassy. Some moms say, swear by it, say that cabbage makes their babies gassy and if that's you and taking cabbage out of your diet makes your baby feel better, you know, okay. Um, but I do want to caution you against that because those foods are really high in nutrients. So we want to make sure we keep that in our diet. Okay, now this is a big one. What about alcohol? So if before pregnancy you maybe had a drink, a glass of wine at night, or maybe you had mimosa at brunch with the girls, um, and you avoided that during your pregnancy, but now you're breastfeeding and you're wondering if that's kind of the same, Maybe you've heard about the old pump and dump method, but what does that actually mean? So I want all moms to listen to this because I want to make sure you're um, safely feeding your baby. So alcohol does, and we know this, alcohol does pass from the, um, our system into the breast milk into the baby. So when you drink alcohol, it does enter your breast milk and it can be transferred from you to the baby. So we want to make sure that we are being careful for moms that are consuming alcohol while breastfeeding. So can you pump and dump? What's the best way to do that? 
so calf or not caffeine, excuse me, alcohol stays in your breast milk as long as it stays in your blood. So generally, if you have one glass of alcohol, say you have a five ounce glass of wine, that's going to stay in your blood and your breast milk for about two to three hours. Every additional glass of alcohol that you have, you need to add two hours to that. If you have, so, okay, one glass, it's going to be in your breast milk for two to three hours. Two glasses, it's going to be in your breast milk for four to five hours. Okay, three glasses, it's going to be in your breast milk for six to seven hours. So we need to, to think about that. Okay, now if you take a drink and you immediately pump and discard your milk, your body is going to just make new milk and that milk is going to have alcohol in it for the next two hours. Um, so the best thing to do is to feed your baby um, breast milk that you have pumped before you drank or waiting at least two to three hours before you breastfeed. So if you do not pump, so okay, let me say it this way. If you have a glass of alcohol and you wait three hours and you haven't pumped, it's okay to breastfeed your baby without pumping and dumping because your body has broken down the alcohol that's in your breast milk by that mark. So say it's five o'clock, you had a drink of alcohol, and you wait until 8 o'clock, and then you breastfeed your baby, the alcohol in your breast milk will have broken down by then. So pumping and dumping um, doesn't get rid of the alcohol in your breast milk. The only way to do that is to um, actually let it metabolize. But if you need to pump and dump because you're engorged, um, and you need to stay on that pumping schedule, absolutely, you can do that. That's just the science behind how our bodies handle alcohol and breast milk. Um, the next thing is, are there any specific foods that boost your milk supply? Number one thing to boost your milk supply, besides pumping on a regular basis or breastfeeding on a regular basis, is water. Make sure you are drinking enough water. Think about it. Breast milk is mainly made out of water. It's what keeps your baby hydrated. And who's supplying that water? You are. So you need to make sure that you have enough water. If you're a breastfeeding mom, you are probably constantly thirsty. You finally sit down to breastfeed and you realize you're super thirsty. Always have a water bottle, always have a glass of water around you. Make sure you're constantly keeping hydrated because our breast milk is made out of water. So we want to make sure we're hydrated. So that's the number one thing, I guess I wouldn't say food, but it's the number one thing that we can do to make sure our supply is good. The next thing is making sure we're eating enough calories. So it takes about 500 extra calories a day to produce breast milk. And that's like running five miles without actually running five miles. Um, so breast milk takes up a lot of energy. Um, so we want to make sure that we are eating enough calories from a variety of healthy foods. So that way we're getting all of those great micronutrients and fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, all of that great stuff. Um, so there is no one food that's going to cause your breast milk to increase. There's no one food that's best for breast, breast feeding. There's water, and there's making sure you're eating enough. Those are the big things. So, um, I hope tonight's live stream, live training was really valuable to you guys. You know, just to recap, we talked a little bit about foods you should avoid. So, caffeine, high mercury fish, alcohol, and you don't have to avoid cabbage. Um, and then we talked about things to boost your milk supply. And what are they? The number two things to boost your milk supply are making sure you're drinking enough water and that you are eating enough calories. Those are the two things.
So if you guys have any questions, um, please feel free to let me know. We'll be here together next week, same time. Um, I'm actually moving next week, so you will see a different backdrop um, as we cross the country and settle into our new home. Um, and again, I encourage you to check out the resource that I put in the comments on the chart for uh, common drinks on the marketplace and their caffeine content. And then don't forget here in 45 minutes to join me via Zoom for our monthly live breastfeeding what to expect group class. So I'm so excited. I will see you guys here in about 45 minutes. Um, and if you're unable to join the breastfeeding class tonight, I always have a recording available and you're more than welcome to have that as well. So you guys have a wonderful rest of your week and I will see you next Wednesday. Bye guys.